Hi, my name is Meg Edwards, and I'm a GTD coach. And today I wanted to talk about what happens when somebody is feeling that their GTD system is um, just out of sorts. Maybe you look at your list and they're outdated or you're overwhelmed or you just feel like, oh, I just kind of want to start over. I wanted to give kind of three tips um, that you might want to think about incorporating to get you kind of back in the game and get you on the other side. The first one is looking at your lists. So let's say that you have a next action list computer. Um, you may have lists by context. You might have lists by topics or by areas of focus. So you could have a next action work list or next action personal list, whatever that may be. And if it's very long and just, just like overwhelming and outdated, rename it. I'm not asking you to delete it. I'm not asking you to try to clean it up. Just rename it and just rename it on hold. And let's say that there are 40, 50, 60, 70 items there. Just call them on hold. Then create a new next actions list and take the top 10, 15 from that on hold list and bring them forward. And now you got a current list again. Um, I've done this plenty of time with clients um, because one of the things that can happen is you just feel like everything is a next action and you've got to do everything. But then when it comes time to engaging in these lists, that just doesn't work. So in your weekly review, you then want to uh, go and look at your on hold lists and then mine them to see if now you want to make any of them current. And sometimes that's just not the case. They're just going to stay on hold. And then eventually you may clean that up or not. Um, it's okay. It's not cheating. It's not a workaround. But again, it's getting you back in the game of getting these lists clean and current so, A, you can kind of continue to do weekly reviews, and you stop using your mind and your emails and paper as your to-do list. So, same goes with your email. Let's say you're looking at your email, and you're like, oh, it's just gotten away from me, and I've got hundreds and thousands of emails again. It's just, I don't know how to get it back to zero. I don't know. I don't have the time to clarify and organize it. So you want to go look at your emails and find that date where you just know that anything later or earlier than that is just not actionable. So here we are at the end of July. Um, really, are there actionable emails in April and May or March? You know, um, And if not, you can just make a folder, take all those backlog emails, put them in there, and either make a next action in your calendar, so block out time or make a next action on your next actions list to go through those emails and just scan them to see if there's anything actionable to bring forward. And then you just know that it's backlog. And maybe you get to clarify and organize and file them away or archive them or delete them, and maybe not. But if you need those emails, they're in a folder. They're not just sitting in your inbox. So now you're left with emails that makes it much more doable to go ahead and finish clarifying and organizing. And even if you went ahead and made a folder for everything earlier than May and you've got June and July and you still feel that that's in the hundreds, make another folder for June and scan June and put those emails in there and then clarify and organize to zero. It's still going to take some time. But again, it's about getting you back in the game. And clarifying and organizing doesn't necessarily mean that you did every one of them. You can triage and separate out your backlog and current. But you never want to chip away at backlog at the extent of staying current. You want to work on your current and chip away at your backlog. And then you'll get on the other side of it. Same goes with paper. If you've got a lot of paper and people still have paper, and it's gotten away from you, triage the stacks. Say, what paper is really current, relevant? What paper just came in, let's say, in the last week? And then the rest of the paper can just be scooped up. You can box it uh, and put it away, but give yourself a reminder to go through that. Again, either block some time in the calendar or make it a next action, because uh, you don't want to use those as your reminder, that backlog box or boxes. Um, and then again, you can chip away at going through that, but not at the expense of staying current. So you want your ends to be current, and you want to separate out your backlog. You want to get it so that those next actions lists are options that you want to see when you're going to do work, and separate out your backlog. 
And one of the things that happens is this, this is going to happen through your GTD journey and through your GTD practice is that life comes at you and we get out of control periodically and we get off course periodically or some incredible opportunity comes. Or I was just talking with a client who uh, moved and, you know, things got away from, from this person because they moved. They were spending all this time moving. But you can make a plan to get on the other side of it. It's when you don't make a plan that you feel like you are feeling out of control and overwhelmed. But once you make a good plan, uh, you're going to feel more in control, even though nothing necessarily in your external world changed. Um, So I hope that helps. And good luck on your continued journey with GTD. For more GTD resources, please visit gettingthingsdone.com and David Allen's YouTube channel. For more information on GTD coaching, please email us at info at gtdfocus.com or visit our website at gtdfocus.com.